Right, a big deal in golf is making sure that your bag is gapped correctly and uh, both lower end, well right through the bag, but top end can be quite difficult and today I'm going to look at making sure you get the top end of your bag, the longer sticks in the bag, make sure they're gapped correctly and make sure you're paying correct attention to the lofts that are on the bottom of these golf clubs. Yes, there are so many variations of club types that we can buy right now, and it's hybrids, five woods, three woods, um, utility irons, long irons. They all carry a number and they all carry a loft, but they can be quite deceiving. And it's something that I've noticed in recent weeks when we've looked at things like seven hybrids, seven hybrids with something like 27 degrees of loft. I assume a seven hybrid would be a very, very similar number in terms of loft as a seven iron and it's not and what I've also noticed is in the woods they've become very much stronger lofted than I thought they were very much in line with irons so what we're going to look at is what you've got to be very very careful of is this do not be deceived by the number on the bottom of the club and I'm talking about loft now because loft can mean many different things and what, the way we're going to analyze this is I'm going to take a five wood that is lofted at 18 degrees and a hybrid that is lofted at 18 degrees and what happens in terms of performance. Right, so let's start off by just talking about the clubs. Uh, we've got, I've got Epic Flash uh, hybrid, Epic Flash five wood. Like I said, set up in exactly the same position and with very, very similar shafts, both uh, very much what I would use. So we've got a great comparison here. First thing is the obvious one, is the length of shaft. There's probably a good two inches longer, and again, I've not got a technical spec in front of me, but uh, from looking at that, at least two inches in terms of uh, extra length on the shaft from the five wood. So naturally, we're expecting longer distances from the five wood straight away. So like I said, this is about not getting confused by picking up a uh, a club based on its loft so for example if you've got a 22 degree four iron three iron whatever it may be in the bag and you simply went to the shelf and said right I want a four degree gap to carry on gapping through my irons you could go for the hybrid at 18 degrees but then would you go for the five wood at 18 degrees that's based on gapping based on loft and what this is going to show is that's far from being and it may be stating the obvious but i'd like to see it down in numbers what is the difference and why is loft such a confusing almost misleading in many ways and this applies to all clubs for me same with the irons strong lofted irons mean nothing it's again what it does in performance we've got a prime example of this here now so what i'm going to do I'll hit balls with both and we'll compare numbers in terms of data. What are we expecting? Well, your comments down below at this stage, what are you expecting to see? So I'm going to throw in my two penneth worth and see what you think. Longer numbers with the five wood, just based on purely on shaft. I'm expecting a higher launch with the five wood because we've been able to get that CG further back in the bigger club head profile. And obviously the opposite to that in the hybrid but the other things that the hybrid perhaps offers is a little bit more versatility maybe a little bit easy to play from the rough maybe playing in and around the greens people who like that shot so there could be reasons and again the other bigger bonus of the hybrid is the shorter shaft giving greater control am i going to find the center of that club face just a little bit more and therefore performance will be a little bit more consistent so they're all the things we've got to consider but like I said, this is all about loft and comparison in terms of performance. So, I think I better hit some golf balls. I'm going to talk. I'm going to hit one shot with each very, very quickly, just to talk about how I feel at address because it's not. This isn't a review of the product. The hybrid is a very. I think for many golfers, it's a confidence-inspiring club in that it's a short shaft, but we've got a big profile on the bottom, uh, a lot more bulk than obviously what our irons would be. And it just gives us that little bit of confidence at address. I think this Epic Flash is a bit of a bit of a powerhouse in terms of. I cut that one out a bit to the right hand side. Wasn't the best of strikes. I just said on another video, I always start off very well. So let's hit another ball. And I said it's because my tempo and rhythm is good, and it was uh, maybe a little bit too too relaxed on that one. That's better. 
committed and got through that. I mean, the, the Epic Flash is a great club, and like I said, straight away, the one thing I will say is how... It, it's, in the, it's in between the ears, how, how comfortable you feel at a dress, how short the shaft is, and it's just... Hybrids are a great club for that same thing. The thing is about a five wood, the confidence comes from a different uh, element for me now. And all of a sudden, I've put a bigger mass behind the ball at a dress. So my confidence now has not gone because I've got the shorter shaft and the control elements. It's because I've put a great big mass behind a ball and I think I can't miss with this thing. So, I mean, which one do I prefer personally at dress? Let's hit this ball first. Oh, great strike with that. Um, well, again, it's different things and that's why each to their own. And, uh, but for me, I actually prefer the bigger mass Particularly from the tee, I'm not saying I would like to play that from the rough, but I'm not overly keen on hybrids either from the rough. But for me, at a dress, if I was playing this on a par four and I've got the choice between the two, then I'd prefer to have the bigger club and bigger mass. That's really two decent balls with that. But, like I said, let's not get too confused. That's a comparison of the two club types. But what do they do in terms of performance? Because the ultimate thing is that this is about comparing lofts in two different styles, the same lofts, but what do they do in terms of performance? I'll carry on hitting balls, get some data, and then try and break this one down. Right, well, as with yesterday's video, I'm afraid it's back into the warm and uh, I'll go through these numbers with you now. And to be fair, this is a quite straightforward and simple uh, evaluation. We've got two clubs, 18 degrees, and the, at the start of this video, the whole point was to find out, or to make sure that we're not looking at loft as being the only thing we consider when gapping our golf clubs. And like I said, it might've been quite obvious, but here's what happened. I'm gonna put the numbers up at the three hybrid first of all. And like I said, we're not going to dwell on this too much at all, but um, you can see the numbers there, 3 to spin, 205 carry. It's not about the performance of the golf club, but let's look at 12.3 in terms of launch and a peak height of 74. All what I'd have expected. I say expected. I mean, I will say that in some respects, there's one sort of thing that I would throw into this uh, when I'm doing the evaluation is that the Epic Flash Hybrid is a bit of a beast. And at 18 degrees... 205 carry, couple of there in 207, it's far stronger in terms of what it actually performs and what it suggests in terms of 18 degrees. Because trust me, in other hybrids, I would have been expecting to be topping out at just under 200. So, it, And I said this in the initial review of the Epic Flash hybrid, it's a bit of a beast. Um, so, 5 wood. Again, numbers up, 215 carry, um, 36 spin, 11 launch, 79 peak height. So we've got effectively 10 yard difference, same loft, 10 yard difference. But what, take it back a little bit to the beginning and compare the two ball speeds um, and club head speed. And those are generated because of length of shaft. So it's interesting for me in that um, I would have expected to see a bigger gap in terms of yardage differences. And I do think that's partly because if we'd used a number of different hybrids uh, other than the Epic Flash, I think we might have seen a bigger gap. And I think for me in the numbers of the five would have been expecting more like in towards that 220 mark. So 217 was three of the shots that I hit. There was one at 211 and one at 213, which dropped it off a little bit. But again, it explains the things that are issues. So dispersion up in front of you now, not a great deal to do in terms of dispersion. For me, you take the one out of the hybrid off the right and you take the two off the left for the five would. And to me, all that you see in there in terms of dispersion is the variables in my strike. So it gets back to the initial thing, 18 degrees and 18 degrees. What was the difference? Well, it was 10 yards. In this particular case, it was 10 yards worth of difference. So if you're gapping, if you're looking for 205 or 215, you'll be led to which club you choose or which 18 degree club you choose based on what gap you're trying to fill. And in, in my case, they would be the numbers. But the interesting thing for me about all this is the only thing that made any difference in reality was the length of shaft. 
I mean, these two clubs almost performed identical in every way. And the only reason we gained more ball speed and ultimately more yardage was down to, in my eyes, the two inches longer shaft that we seen. Now I'm gonna throw one more thing into the equation just to make this ultra complicated, and I never like to do this, but throw up my numbers from last night's video where we seen me use a five wood head with a hybrid shaft in, and the numbers are almost, I say almost, pretty much identical to those of the three hybrid with the same shaft in. Does that make sense? You might have to go and watch last night's video. But basically, the biggest story in all of this, in the two videos that we've done over the last two days are, it really boils down to length of shaft, not so much the change in the loft in terms of the heads, it's been length of shaft that has made all the difference in my eyes. Um, so, the evaluation is this, choose your club wisely, choose your club based on the yardage that you hit, not the loft that it says, but also choose it on um, making sure, going back to last night's video and combining these two together, the shorter shaft for me is the greater appeal in terms of control, and then combine it with the head that you like, and then you've got the ultimate situation, and it's just about bridging those gaps via yardage, not via looking at lofts on the bottom of that club face. I hope I didn't complicate that too much. But anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. Your comments are greatly appreciated. The input has been fantastic over the last uh, few videos and hopefully that keeps on coming. I will carry on with this type of video and keep on the, the search for the ultimate setup in terms of that 14 club selection for the average golfer. But for now, I'm off. See you soon. Good night.